Hello, everybody. Hopefully the volume's okay. I'm not going to be too sure. Brady's got his, his, his iPad open just to double check to make sure that's not going to blow your speakers out. Um, that seems okay. Cool. Uh, Adam here. Nice, hey, nice to see everybody uh, join us today on a lovely Wednesday while we play some Hour of Need. Um, we are also going to uh, you know, answer any questions you guys might have uh, about anything Blacklist related. Um, while we're here, um, we we actually it's been a while since we played Hour of Need. Um, I think the last time we played was a live stream. I think I think so. We've um, yeah we've been we may or may not have been working on some new games that may or may not have cards as well. So we've kind of been you know. this will be a ref- <laughs> this will be a nice refresher for us. But also it'll be a good example of how how easy the game is to you know learn or pick up uh, for those who haven't played it um, or taken a break from it. So it'll be it'll be a fun experience. Um, we have. I'll help, go ahead and put the uh, overhead camera here, just so you guys can see what we're looking at. Um, this. And I'll explain the. Uh, yeah, Brady, setup will, Brady here. will tell you what we're playing with, um, with which issue we're playing, villain, and our heroes. So just a couple of other things, real quick. Someone asked, uh, will there be a possibility to get our on your web store? Um, we 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 don't know exactly how much stock we'll have left over because this isn't a huge print run based on the Kickstarter um, performance, but we're hoping we'll have enough to uh, to fulfill you know additional orders in the web store but we'll have more official wording on that soon um, once we have a better view of it yes we're, um, we're always always hopeful that after we fulfill our kickstarters that we'll have all available inventory for sale on our web store afterwards um okay so we are playing uh, uh we're playing from one of the standalone expansions the uh, judge and jury um over the overhead view here is the issue guide um, we're playing this issue, which is called Campaign Trail. Actually, I don't know if the camera's not going to be picking up there. Oh, is it just a still the image? I don't know. That's weird. I mean, it's it is delayed, but that's weird. That yeah, that, that is bizarre. So hold on, maybe maybe the cameras. <laughs> that is bizarre. Yeah, we, we're gonna have to figure this out here because. So yeah, well, while it's not what 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 this isn't that important just yet i'll just go ahead and so uh we're playing uh an issue from judge and jury which is uh the box i'm playing uh curtains from the redemption box um so i'm playing as a bad guy turned good guy um adam is playing uh, stride from the core game she's the speedster um and now also we are playing with uh some uh, upgrades so we have the miniatures and the or the sorry the bystanders and the minions pack. We're playing against the stretch goal, um, acrid villain deck. Um, and I have these, uh, stretch goal miniatures for curtains, uh, um, decoy tokens. So these are used for curtains enemy uh, villain deck. There's also a card to use them as a modular, um, like challenge in any game mode, or you can use them for your hero. There's also tokens, obviously, that you can use for these. Um, I think that's all the stuff we're playing with, and I can go ahead and read the introduction stuff for this out of the issue guide while Adam's figuring out the camera situation here. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> what's uh, what's your scheme, by the way? I have the flesh molding. molding. Okay. All right, so camp, the campaign trail, we have the introduction. Anybody who's familiar with uh, our need knows that the issue guide will have the introduction flavor text, the introduction for each of the schemes you uh, are assigned, because each player gets a personalized scheme they're trying to solve before fighting the enemy, fighting the villain. The villain has hidden tokens on his card. You can't reveal him and have a showdown until you've gotten rid of those hidden tokens. So in this one, uh, Angela Knox waved to her supporters as she stepped out from the stretch limousine. It seemed like each time she had a rally, she drew greater numbers. But from what she saw and heard tonight, it seemed like this turnout was slightly weaker. There's another rally tonight, one of her aides told her. Downtown, some military guy just entered the race. How did we not know about this? Angelica asked, furious, trying to keep a smiling face as she continued to pose for pictures. The aide leaned closer. It's it's General Domain. The next picture of Angela Knox was a candid photo of pure terror. <laughs> so uh, my uh, scheme that I have is rival candidate, which is fitting, give it that intro. And then uh, yours is flesh molding. So uh, flesh molding is... This is a little introduction for what his his little job is. Andrew walked excitedly to his local polling station, eager to add another number to Knox's side. 
He wasn't afraid to admit that while General Domain made some great promises, it was impossible to forget the disasters that happened in the military when General Domain was still an active officer. There was something fishy about that. The dark alley wasn't the most pleasant way to the library, but Andrew hoarded crowds and liked, to, liked the seclusion. He stopped in his tracks when he heard a strange, slimy sound and then a plop from behind. He turned and a scream was caught in his throat as he stared at a writhing mass of flesh that quickly took on the form of himself. The new Andrew smiled and said, thanks for voting for the general. And then the uh, rival candidate introduction. General Domain walked into the mayor's office. He surveyed the place meticulously, cautiously. He stopped at the mayor's desk and picked up the nameplate and said, Mayor Knox. He tossed it casually over his shoulder. After careful inspection, he stepped behind the desk and took a seat. Two police officers entered the office. One of their faces was visibly melting. Fix that, the general commanded, or you'll go back in the vat. The molded officer smashed mashed the amorphous flesh of his face around until it began to take shape again. Keep the building locked down. I don't want anyone in here until the poll results are released. Then, well, it won't matter anymore, will it? All right, so then each of those has additional little story elements when you solve them. Did you fix the camera? No. <laughs> well, that's less exciting. <laughs> that's bizarre how it's it got like a picture taken at least. Uh, let's see what we got. Any questions? Um, what about the stock for Street Masters and expansion of the store? Um, the Street Masters will be... Uh, oh, something changed. Is that working now? Uh, there it is. I think I fixed it. I don't yep. see my hand yet. Well, it's it's it's, it's, it's a little okay. delayed, but you can at least see it here. So I think we ah, fixed the camera it. issue. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll have more information about the uh, Street Masters again when the uh, when the print runs, um, you know, fully manufactured and everything. So Because there's the Indiegogo that needs to be fulfilled still. So that's going to be, we're re reprinting all that stuff. Um, okay, so ready to begin? So each draw four cards. Um, start the game off with the villain turn. Did you already go over our heroes, by the way? Yeah. Because um, I wasn't well, listening at all. Well, I didn't go over like play styles, yeah. but yeah. I'm, I'm playing Stride, the uh, the speedster. Um, and and I, I, I explained uh, curtains and my tokens that I'm using. Yeah, she's a little, she's in the core set, so she's, uh, and she's also a little more straightforward of hero, so it's a good comparison between her and curtains. Yeah, and in traditional Redemption uh, Legacy, the legacy it has, uh, Redemption Fighters and Heroes are not necessarily balanced, so we'll see. Because, I mean, awesome. Yeah, it looks like it confirmed by viewers that the camera is now working. Awesome. So we're good to go. Okay. So the first thing we do, the game sequence is going to be villain turn, heroes do their turn, and then the, the issue will do a turn. So for the villain turn, we each draw a villain card and resolve it. So this is what it looks like right here. Um, it's a cover-up expert. First thing you're going to do is you're going to resolve these icons from left to right. So we have the yellow um, X there. Again, we're using the uh, minion uh, miniatures as opposed to the tokens. So that's a minion's going to spawn in that location that corresponds with the color and shape. And then we also have this icon, which means it's a special event. So the special event says Acrid Mutates. All right, so this is a special thing with Acrid. Um, he's a stretch goal villain, so he's a little more uh, involved than some of the other villains. So each time he mutates, he's going to attach a card uh, from his deck to a um, one of his lackeys. But he doesn't have any lackeys in play. So instead, Adam's taking the topmost one and spawning it. So he's going to spawn over here. And this has the skull icon right here, the threat icon, which means it goes in my threat area. And these are the cool translucent sludge minis. <laughs> and then my villain card is... So I have a great toxic surge. So he's summoning a green minion down here at the Dane Labs. And uh, there is a no other thing on this, which is nice. Yeah, the, so. the text you'll see on those cards are typically for the showdown effects. That and winning. yeah, and special for if, for instance, he has the mutate effect. That's only in play when it's attached to a lackey because he's constantly mutating his uh, his flesh. What are they called? Biofiends yep. to get additional abilities. All right, so, so now it's back to us. So we each have two actions, and th these uh, the hero turn is all um, simultaneous. So you can resolve uh, your turns together, but you take each action individually. Um, I will spend an action to move toward. I have I have to go to City Hall and I have no movement effects and you have two three I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do my 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 basic action. She has a basic action on her card right there, the icon that says move and then move. Um, it's a little blurry there. Let's see if you can see it. Can you point to that for me with your Where? other with your hand? The action, yeah, right there. Move and then move. So she, I'm gonna go ahead and move. Moving is three spaces. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and go one, two, three to, can you reach that for me? I'm gonna go ahead and rescue that bystander. You're not there, quite there yet. Well, I'm gonna move through it because I moved twice. Oh, that's... And then I'm gonna move, I'm gonna, so in, I'm gonna end next to that. Get a clue? Yeah, when you rescue a bystander, you get a clue, which is a bonus die or a special effect. Um, and now I am adjacent to the Biofiend, so I am in a good position to attack on my turn. So I'm not doing. sure about the web store launch date. Um, I know Scotty's been really busy working on that. He dumped water on his laptop, though, so I think he's fixing yeah, we, we've, that. We've still. had a very uh, <laughs> hectic week with cri like a couple of crises we're dealing with. Um, I have uh, my, my daughter's actually on vacation with her grandparents uh, at the Grand Canyon and had to go to the urgent care for some diabetes related stuff. So it's been a fun week for everybody. Uh, <laughs> I will exhaust this to place. I'm going to place a progress, a justice on my, what's your, here's a 10. I'm going to put one on yours. Put that on your card. Here. Oh, we're trying to get rid of those. Yes. When we get rid of those, we're going to solve those schemes. Uh, mine says, until recently, Mayor Knox had been running unopposed. So now i gotta, I got to investigate what this rival candidate's doing. One thing I forgot to do on my turn is when I did my action, we have these handy little action tokens. You flip them over just to mark that you've done one of your actions. I'm going to rescue, I'm going to spend my other action to... To move three. One, two, three. Can't really do much on my turn, but I'm going to rescue him, get a card. So I am done with my actions. So once you finish your second action, um, you have an option to play any any cards, you any free cards you want. And I just realized I do have one. Um, I will... Um, I will do this uh, unrehearsed. Gain one focus or place one decoy token. I'm going to place a decoy token in City Hall. So if anybody, the, the problem with the decoy tokens are really handy for me, but if anybody goes into the, there, I, I take a damage because they, they found out, you know, it's not really me. It's my illusion, essentially. So place that there. Um, and then this goes discarded. And then I have to do my threat turn. Now, my threat turn says activate. If the VAT space nearest to you, which is right here, contains a bystander, it is captured. Otherwise, that VAT deals you two damage. So I'm, I'm suffering two damage right now. That's a nasty one. So it's spitting out all kinds of crap at me. And we have these handy token dishes that'll come into your core games, which are really nice. So this is a good question for people. Can I, when I have a card that lets me attack any number of spaces within five spaces of me, does that include scheme panels? Yes. So I can attack the scheme panel because it's right here. Yes. So I have this cool card called Flurry Strikes, which you'll see down here, this icon means it's an action. This says I can attack gaining plus one die and targeting any number of spaces within five spaces of me, then I can move. So again, she is very mobile. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this as well because I really want to take out this Biofiend. So I'm getting uh, her attack is two by default, that little icon right there, and I'm getting two bonus dice. So I get to roll four dice on this. And when I attack, you can tell them how I distribute hits. All right? Yeah. Go you can choose, yep. Yeah. So anytime you calculate your successes, whether or not you're attacking or solving, um, if you ever have the ability to target multiple spaces, like if you're attacking enemies who are all nearby you, you can distribute your hits however you want amongst them. So I rolled these bursts, are criticals. Um, so you can see right there. Burst. Um, means you get a, get a success and you get a roll again. All right, so I got plenty of success there. I got one, two, three, four, five. I don't have any focus, so I can't spin focus to turn these focus symbols into successes, but I will be getting those as a resource um, at the end of this um, roll. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I need um, five to defeat the Biofiend. He's so four I'm, to defeat the Biofiend. I thought this was defense. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, has, he has one defense, so I need five to defeat him. Um, so, unfortunately, I'm going to go ahead and put all onto him. I wanted to take out this minion as well, but he's more important. So defeating a henchman gives me a clue. Um, I got hacked comms, and then the card lets me move after I do my attack. So I'm gonna go ahead and move. Um, I guess I'll move towards. I'll go rescue this bystander. One, two, three. Get closer. Probably there. I'll have to do all the solving because Adam's too busy running around. Oh, wait, Where, where's where's Dean Labs is downtown? Oh man, I might I might have to work my way down there instead. I'm already I'm I'm already heading that way. Where's I, yours? Mine's right there. So I have a guy. I have my. Okay, well then you then both. you can solve. I know. I'm just, just saying. Just, that's why I said I had to solve these. He's talking trash. And then so that was my second action, and then I um, do your I, I res resolve any threats I have. My uh, Dane Labs flesh molding scheme says um, activate if the um, that nearest to you contains a bystander. It does not. 
it is captured. Otherwise, that bat deals you two damage. So two more damage spitting out at you. So and one thing I didn't do at the end of my roll, I forgot to mention, is um, I get one, two, three focus. Once you get five focus, you can spend it to flip your card over to your uh, charge. Is it called charge in this game? I forget. It's focused. Focus side. That's right. You get to draw a card at the end of your turn after you do your all your threats. And then we're gonna I'll make sure I didn't have any free stuff I wanted to do. Um, nah, I think I'm good. Then we're going to resolve our issue. So the issue here says voter manipulation. So this is just an event. Um, then again, this serves as a deck because if we ever can't draw a card from here, we lose. So we have 10 turns to figure this out. If compromising materials is in play, it is not. Um, the villain would capture one bystander. Otherwise, the villain schemes. So this is cool because now the villain's going to steam. So the way this works is you look at the villain's current uh, position on the uh, issue board. Every scheme panel has its own scheme effect. This one, he's currently at the campaign HQ. Angela Knox campaign headquarters is in the downtown Meridian City, where she has gathered overwhelming support in the upcoming election. Scheme. If there is at least one clone in a bystander space, there is not, the villain advances. Otherwise, resolve the polling effect on cloned voters. Cloned voters is a card here, and it says polling. Move X different bystanders on the map three spaces toward the VAT space nearest them. X equals the number on this current scheme panel. So he's just going to move one. So we'll move this one. One, two, three. Whenever they enter a VAT space, it adds a clone to the nearest empty um, uh, bystander space. So the the, uh, the Acrid, who's honest, is funny because Acrid's actually the villain working in the background. It's the current villain. He made a clone of this bystander, which is bad for us because now these people are going to vote for General Domain. And then if there are less than X bystanders in the map, place one bystander. But there are there are two right now on the map, so that's all that happens. So that is the issue turn. So now it's back to the villain turn. Here's your card. So I have cover up, ex cover up expert. So green is getting minion, and then the special is acrid will mutate. So you take another bio fiend. I just defeated that guy. And I have toxic surge, another yellow. Can you put him on the yellow one? And then a green also. That's getting pretty crowded over there. Um, and then there's no effect. Otherwise, just spawning more minions. So back to us. We get our actions back. We stand up all our cards. Um, I need to solve some stuff. I need to get to green, though, because it's pretty crowded there. And if we ever have to place a minion and we can't, we resolve a crisis effect, which speeds up the, the villain's schemes. So that's bad news. So I will go ahead and do... I'm going to do one-man show. This is an action. So this is attack or solve. You may target a space near a decoy token, then place one decoy token. I will target this one because nobody's there. So I get to roll my solve is two. I will spend this. Actually, no, I won't spend. I'm going to keep this. I'm just going to do two. Oh, not great. So I did one success. I put one justice on my card, and I get one focus. Could have been better. I'm going to... Are you done with that action? Yeah, that action. I'm going to go ahead and do this Blazing the Trail card. It does not cut it to cost an action. Um, it says you may either choose a hero to gain one focus or discard one focus choose a hero to move. I'm going to go ahead and discard a focus to choose myself. And I'm going to go one, two, three. And again, when you move through a bystander, you automatically rescue him. You don't have to spend an action or anything. So I am rescued that bystander. And I got uh, Encouraging Lead here. I'm going to play this card real quick. Did you finish that action? That wasn't an action. It was just an action. Okay, I'm going to do this. This is not an action either. I'm going to play this card. When you play this card, you may place one decoy token. I'm going to place it, um, I think, up here. And so I have a constant card. I think you might have already explained it, but these stay in play. They kind of build up into your play area. Um, this one does not cost an action to play, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in my play area. What, it, what I am doing is I am giving up this heroic icon. Those are those icons. You can play those from your hand to get free actions. This would be a free attack. So I'm giving up a free attack by putting this into play to make my give my character more options. Um, so just so you know now, if you're ever solving, I can exhaust this, and you can solve anywhere that has uh, one of my decoys. Okay. Well, I ha now I can. Uh, I have this card where I can exhaust my hero card to an attack to do an attack, gaining plus one die, which I'm going to attack that bio fiend. Um, so I get three dice. And I'm going to go ahead and spin these two leads. Actually, I'm going to spin one lead to get 
uh, another die. So I have five dice, four dice. Come on, burst. Okay, so I have one, two, three hits for sure. If I spin my two focus, I can turn those into successes, which would defeat that guy, and then I get one focus back. So that's a good, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm defeating so him, I get another clue. And all of this I've done so far, my turn without spinning an action. I so, a yellow card. Um, heroes can do a lot of cool things. Um, and now I can get in a position where I can solve maybe. Um, Remember, you can solve any space that has, so either here or here where our, our schemes are. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play this. Oh, that's a free solve. I'm, I'm going gonna... to put another, uh, another justice on that one. Okay, I'm going to do a, a move. I'm going to do a move action. One, two, three, going in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a my second action. I'm going to do an attack. Try to kill these two minions. Minions only take one hit unless they have special rules. Um, we're not using any special rules right now. So, of course. <laughs> so, I will spin to focus to make a success, so at least I'll take one of those guys out. Um, and then I get a focus back. Um, and I guess my last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this card right here for the free solve icon to do a free solve action. My solve is three. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and... What am I solving here anyway? Why am I going? Because you're solving my scheme. But you're blue. What? Oh, you're. But I can solve anywhere, right? You can solve any. If, yeah, exhaustus. You can solve any of them. I'll solve blue. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and get a free, uh, free die with this with my clue card. All right. So I got a critical. Another critical. It's important to note too. Anybody can target another critical. <laughs> anybody's scheme. So. All right, so that was a good roll. Um, one thing to note also is since there is a minion in my space, I'm going to be taking damage for doing a solve action with him there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. What that, that is one away. From uh, okay, I'll spin a focus then and bust seven. it. All right, so when the, when this gets busted, it's going to knock out one of uh, Akrid's hidden tokens off his card. So I need a damage and then, I took a damage. And you get a, um, you get a clue for that, for solving it. So now General Domain comes out. So when this card is flipped, so these are double-sided cards. He just solved the rival candidate. He was going to check out what's going on there. The General Domain is revealed. So when this card is flipped, place General Domain's token in the City ah, Hall scheme too. space. I can't wait to get my copy. What? These co this copy is over Brady's house. So I can't wait to get my... my oh. He said he needs it. And I said, oh. I said I, me too. I uh, need it. Uh, so this one says uh, he's got 12 health and uh, he hits for 3. And he is pretty nasty. He moves around and just damages people. Um, so, and he activates, he commands other enemies to activate as well, so he's pretty nasty. Alright, so that was your action, right? You're all done with oh, actions? I didn't bust yours, though. Didn't I bust, was I busting mine? No, yours is green. You're busting mine. The rest of you said I could bust anywhere. Did you want to bust yours? Yours wouldn't have busted, though. Alright. I, I thought I was busting mine. I was all excited, but I guess Well, it's per, I'm, I'm close to yours anyway, so. Alright, so, uh, that was your action. Um, and did you do your... Thank you're you. All, thank you, Perry. You're done with your actions, right? So can you do your scheme effect? Yes, I am done with my actions. Um, if the vat nearest me contains a bystander... Nope. nope. Otherwise, that vat... Oh, wait. Two yeah, damage. it is. The, oh, the one nearest to you here. Yeah, so... No. So I take two damage unless I spin this, right? Yep. Give me a five. I'll just take a five. I'll leave the damage over here. All right, I'm half defeated. All right, so I will... Make my move. I'm gonna go ahead and spend my switching roles card for the mobility icon. I'm low on cards. So I'm just gonna fly over here. Actually, you know what, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. Um, actually, I have to, because I can't. Ugh, I can't do it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go here, and then I will spend my action to attack these thugs so they don't kill me. I'll spend this action, but I'll also spend this, this to give me a plus one die. So I'm at three on this attack. Actually, I won't spend that action. I'm just gonna spend this card to get my free attack. This clue I can attack for free. There we go. I got a burst out of that. I'm actually so surprised three. how quickly this game comes back to me. It's uh, it's pretty easy to learn, I think. So, so I just cleaned house here. These guys are all defeated. I, I, I think this this is by far our most accessible MDS game. Um, so I hope uh, people. People like it because it'd be really cool to do more for it. <laughs> and then I will solve my last action. Just two, just two boring two dice. 
Oh, nice. Two focus out of that. Two successes on yours. On this thing? Yeah, two justice. And then I am done. So General Domain's going to move three and inflict. He's going to go where... Let's see, move toward me. One, two, three. So close. Um, if unable to inflict, activate the enemy nearest General Domain. There are none. So that's good at least. And then that is... My card. And then issue turn. Voter manipulation again. So if compromising materials in play, nope. So now he's in a scheme again. I didn't draw a card. If there's at least one clone in a bystander space, there is. We haven't gotten that yet. So if we ever go here, we can spin an action to get rid of that and get a clue. But we didn't do it. So now he's going to advance. When he moves here, um, this goes away. And I take damage. He saw through my ploy. And then... And as a reminder, I still can't attack Acrid where I am because we need to we need to reveal him first. He's scheming. We need to get him on the map. Speaking of which, he's going now. Acrid Vat. I got a, it's a peril. These are what I wanted to we wanted to add with stretch goals, but we haven't got we never got that far. <laughs> get some miniatures for those, like some little translucent vats. I'm sorry we have missed it, but what does MDS stand for? It's a modular deck system, um, which is kind of just a shorthand for kind of our design style, essentially. And then we have a uh, minion on blue. And then now this right here, if I remember correctly, the villain's going to either inflict me or, or he's going to scheme. I'm going to let him inflict me um, because scheming would be bad. His inflict is three. That hurts. I need to heal. I'm three away from dying. And then uh, many uh, bystanders getting placed there. Now, as a reminder, I can solve. I'm adjacent to the peril right now because I'm in the scheme panel, correct? Um, no, you're here. This is. Oh, I'm, I'm yep. looking. I was looking at the yellow. I didn't look closely enough. Yeah, so this is different than this. All right, so now it's our turn. Um, I still need to solve yours because we still can't go after Acrid. Things are heating up, though, because I'm almost dead, and Akron's already advanced once. Well, I'm going to go ahead and exhaust just to move twice, because I need to solve this thing. Do you? I mean, otherwise, another another lackey's going to come out. The lackeys are nothing, though, man. They're just uh, chumps. Okay. Okay. I'm not telling you what to do, but... Um, Brady's telling me what to do. I'm telling you what to do. I'm not telling you to do, but I'm telling you what to do. Um, so, I could... I need to attack this minion, and then solve, I guess. Actually, yeah, I can. I get a free attack here because of my building momentum. So I'm gonna, I'm go gonna ahead play and this real quick that. while you're doing that. Unrehearsed to gain a focus. And Defeat. I'm gonna spin that focus. Defeat this minion easily, but I get no focus out of it. I'm gonna spin my focus to become focused. Okay, um, and I guess I will spin an action to solve. Do you want to solve here? Um. Well, I need to solve green, right? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I'm not at green, just so you know, you are. Yep, I know. But I can't get there? I've, do you have a wing? <laughs> a mobility? Oh, I mean, I, I thought that you could give me, like, you could let me do it anywhere. Uh, well, actually, let me see if I have a... Uh... Oh, yeah, I can. I can spin an action to play this. So before you do anything, I'll spin an action, play this. This says, when you play this, you may place a decoy token. I'll There's always it. a way. There's always place, a way to place do it what you want to do. Um... Go ahead. All right, so now I'm going to spin an action to just do a basic solve. I'm going to get a bonus die on it, so I get four dice. I have no cards, though. That's the problem with the freeform card play in this. It's tempting to play all your cards, but now I'm, now I'm empty. Uh, not as many hits as I wanted. So four hits. Um, one Are you targeting away. green? Right? Targeting green, yeah. Okay. Four hits. I guess I'll spin my last focus. Um, and I will get two back anyway, so I, I did still bust it, which is good. Oh, you bust it? So I'm going to get rid of this card when you do that. When you uh, After your problem is solved, you may discard this card from your play area to place one decoy token. I will place it here. And so now Acrid has no more uh, defenses. He's no, he's no more. He's not hidden anymore. So he goes in the... No, no, no only when we, when we reveal him. That's right. Oh, right, we still have to solve him. Yep. Um, so I've solved this this flesh molding, so I flip it over, and we have uh, crude copies. This is any, any vat space. Um, when it activates, it's going to place a minion in a scheme panel containing exactly one minion. 
So I need to solve that, any vat space. So I'm going to do this real quick. I'm focused now, so I'm going to exhaust. And I can heal one damage for each decoy token out, which is nice because I'm hurting. So I heal three. Um, and then I will spend my last action to discard each decoy token. Each time you discard a decoy token, this way attack or solve targeting a space near that token. Flip this card. So I will not discard this one because there's nothing they can I can really attack right now with it because he's not close enough. Um, so I will uh, discard this one to solve, which is two. You're solving against Akron? Yep. Uh, I got one <laughs> justice. Wait, before you do that, did you need did you need to focus at all? Yeah. You can take one focus. Um, so I, would be, I did two. I did two progress, two justice on me. That wasn't worth will, my card. And I'll discard this one to attack to get rid of that minion. Got him. Bursted. Another focus. Cool. So I'm close to getting back up. So I flip this back over. That's all my turn is, unfortunately. Not as great as I still have weapons, one action left. Um, I have to activate General Domain. He's going to move up and inflict me. So he's hitting me for... Uh, he's hitting me for three. Which hurts. Good thing I healed. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play this local assistance. I'm going to call the cops on that um, acrid vat. And it says, this thing, if you don't use it for the dice, you use it for the text effect. And it says, you may solve targeting any peril card in play. So I get a free solve against this acrid vat. Let's see if I can uh, get a couple bursts. Uh, no. Ooh, ooh. One, two, three, four. Oh, so close. If I spent all my focus, I could do it. I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to spend all my focus so I, I don't get any focus out of this. But I defeated this acrid vat. That goes away. Get a clue. I get a, a clue. I'm swimming in clues this game. I am not. All right. And then I will do my last action is going to be just a solve against um, acrid. And I'm going to use this for two dice. So I get five dice on this solve. And I have no focus. So I got to roll good. No bursts. One, two, three, four. With two focus. So, four on him. So, let's place that with a five. That's all I can do. I should have organized this before the game. I didn't I didn't organize my token tray yet. Five, there we go. So, he is ha almost half almost half revealed. So, did you hear threat? Uh, place one minion in a scheme panel containing exactly one minion. If unable, place one minion in Dane Lambs. So, here... That's not good. They're molding. All right, so issue. issue. Oh yeah, we I have to draw my card. And oh good, I have no cards right now. It sucks. So molded thralls. If crude copies is in play, uh, is that yours? Yep. Um, each minion inflicts. Nobody is. Luckily, it hits nobody. If no minion inflicted this way, the villain schemes. Son of a gun. <laughs> so normally these cards will have something bad happening. If it doesn't happen, the villain just does the scheming instead. Um, so, I see a question. Is there any chance to having to add extra amount to our pledges to make them able to be shipped provided the current exceptional situation with containers and boats? Uh, unfortunately, no, because, I mean, if, if you wanted to airship from China or something like that, it would cost you way more than the pledge. Uh, I mean, it, it's ridiculously expensive to airship. Um, when we have to airship demo copies, it costs a fortune. So, and also we just, we, we don't have the, uh, logistical capabilities to organize something like that where we allow backers to pay for separate shipping. Cause all the, the factory, when they produce something, they put it all into a container and they get ready for the boat. So it's not like individually organized by pledge or backer number. They don't have, they don't know who gets what the factory just packages up in the container and the fulfillment company quartermaster they're the ones who have the backer information and pick and pack orders so we just can't offer that unfortunately and i don't think any backer would want to pay that much money for that kind of shipping <laughs> so it is a horrible situation going on right now um but luckily we're in a situation now where we're just trying to get boat space and hopefully we get that worked out in a reasonable amount of time um i have untested terror so green is spawning a minion and a bystander is spawning that's not good. We're running out of bystander spaces. And then I have uh, green and then Akron's mutating, which means the biofiend's coming back. It's always the yellow one. Good thing you're up there. 
the, the trade-off to this is even though the same one keeps spawning in this because, um, well, I, lower player counts especially, at, the, at least it's a way where um, you kind of know where it's coming from because, like, repeated lackey spawns is pretty nasty. <laughs> All right, so I have uh, the yellow biofiend. I'm going to stand this up, get my actions back. I need cards badly. Oh, my cards suck. I'm going to spend an action to draw a card. I am short. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and play this as an action. I'm going to play this card that lets me draw a card and then heal two damage. I'm going to get squished here because of the general domain. I have no way to get out of here, man. Um, all I can do right now is attack, but I know I can't. I can't defeat general domain. I can go ahead and try to solve Akrid real quick. How much more do we need? He needs eight more. Ooh. Well, I might roll. I'm gonna roll some bursts. Um. Well. I could attack. Or I could move. Seems like solving is the most important thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna solve with two extra dice. So I get five dice. Hopefully, get a burst. So I got one, two, three, four with a burst. Five. I can do six. Is that enough? Six? No? Yeah, six is enough. Wait. Six. No. Six is close. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do six anyway. Um, uh, sorry, I was reading a question. I'm not. Uh, is it necessary to add extra money to make it? He's got two left. So I'm going to move. One, two. Actually. Oh, one, I, I, two. I think you're asking if we allow all backers to put money in to, to cover the cost. It's, I um, hate that clue. While, while cost is definitely a factor in getting a container, it's also just uh, the shortage is hard to secure boat space as well. So um, I'll have to double check, but I believe... We have the containers for our need. It's it's a matter of getting boat space. I think that I think that's the biggest problem, um, but I will confirm that. Um, but yeah, the, the scheduling is the biggest thing. Because luckily, the good thing for our need is that it was a smaller print run because it just wasn't as successful as a Kickstarter. So I guess that's one little upside to it. But again, I will confirm that with my boss. So. Okay, so I can knock out those minions. Might as well. And I can put one, two, three damage on General Domain. And I gain two focus, which I will flip for. And I will heal, because I'm really close to dying. So I can heal one damage for each decoy token in play, then place a decoy token. I oh, by the way, I, I did my last action, so I didn't activate my crude copies. So I'll place one here. So place a minion in the Dane Labs. Here? Yep. Well, that sucks. Now I lost him. Now I wouldn't have healed that. Dang it. <laughs> Alright, and then General Domain's going to move three and inflict me for three. I am dead. He got me. Alright, so you guys are going to see what happens when Hero dies. So I'm out. So Crisis triggers place one issue token on an empty bystander space. Issue tokens are clones. Uh, empty bystander space up there, I believe, is only one. Adam, up there. I see, Michael. If, if that's what the question was, it didn't seem like that's what the question was, but if that was the question, we're, we haven't been asking backers to pay extra money. Um, that We're, we're avoid, trying to avoid that as, as much as we can. Um, so that has not come up um, for us. I know a lot of publishers have had to deal with that and had to ask for extra shipping costs. Um, we're trying to avoid that, so we'll let you know if that changes, but uh, I don't think it will be. So... So I have to resolve the but we phase. do need to pay extra money. If that's what you're, like as a company, we will have to pay extra shipping costs because the containers are more expensive right now. So. He's inflicting you for for three, three. Yep. Uh, 
I have this. Let's me block with two damage, right? Yep. Yeah, I'll do that. Give me a one damage. So now anytime uh, another clone spawns, it's going to go on this card, and if it happens three times, we're done. All right. Unless we unless you save that bystander or get rid of one did of Did you just do the issue turn then? That's it. No, I just did my turn. So it's the issue turn. So you're done? Yep. Um, authoritarian, 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 how do you spell I, I can't talk today. Authoritarianism? Authoritarianism. 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 <laughs> it's General Domain kicking somebody in the face. <laughs> um, if General Domain is in play, he activates. So he's going to activate, go toward you. If we're two, playing this three. solo, do we play with just one hero or do we have to play two heroes together? Uh, you can play with just one hero. Um, some people like some people like to play MDS games uh, like dual-handed, um, which kind of opens the door to lots of combos and stuff. But you can definitely play with just one hero. He hits you again for three. <laughs> I'm not blocking that one. I'm going to go down two. All right, so villain turn. Here's your villain card. All right, I got yellow is getting minion. Oh, no. Then the scheming. Oh, no, lost the damage. Then he's scheming. What's, oh, his, scheme? what's, his, what's uh, his scheme? So you don't want to take the inflict, because you can either let him inflict you or let him scheme if he hits you for three. But if that kills three, you, then... that, would, that would kill me. Okay, so he's going to scheme. So it says if there are at least two clones, there are. He's in advance. He's almost there. And then a minion. Or a bystander. Uh, it can't go, so he's captured. Uh, things aren't looking good. And then I have uh, untested uh, terrors, so red minion. And then another bystander is getting captured. Uh, you can see things uh, get out of control pretty quickly. Especially with, oh, sorry, with, uh, with Akrid. I told you so many times. Watch your oh, yeah, I forgot. I should not let accidents happen when you tell me not to. I forgot. Can you uh, use more than one clue card to add to a dice roll? Yeah, so you can spin yes. all if you want. You can save them up and have an amazing... That's why we sell extra dice packs, because you got to... You know, sometimes you have to accommodate big, huge dice rolls. All right, so I guess I need to just make my way down to Dane Labs. Um... I guess I'll exhaust this to place a, a Justice on here. Actually, I could have done that last time, so he's actually now flipped over. So I busted him, and I get a clue. So Akrid is now revealed. He's in my threat area, and he is on the space now. If we ever do an expansion, we should make one of these just three dice with no text effect. Yeah. Just a whole deck of them. Let's just replace the whole deck with that. Let's just do all four dice. All right, so uh, now Akrid's going to be... Now, now we can at least kill him. He's got 20 health. <laughs> um, I have no nothing I can do, so I'm going to go, I guess, work my way over to... You can't move me, right? I know you usually have I can. Ones. No, usually I have other things I could do. Um, I can make us draw a card. Uh, yeah, card. Yeah. Each hero reveals the top card of their deck, return to the top or bottom. Yes. Actually, I'm giving up a free solve for this. Is it worth it? Yeah, what are you going to solve? All we're doing is fighting now. This uh, is crude copies. Yeah, that's, uh... All right, so I'm going to go ahead and bury mine. So you can put it in the top or bottom, and then you can... Um, then each hero may draw one card and gain one focus. Oh, there we go. I will place a decoy token. Yes, I also do find Alter Quest to be more exciting with two heroes. Um, that being said, I find this game to be more exciting overall than Alter Quest, uh, just because there's so much happening. Um... Alter Quest is more of a slow crawl, I think. So, this is one's more fast paced. Okay, so I will. Should I just go and attack Acker? Do you think get this over with? How much does he have health wise? Twenty. Ooh, doggy. Might as well just start at it. Start at him. Um, oh, he mutates, by the way. So, um, and he each by a feet. So if I move twice, I could go one, two, three, one, two, three. I'll spend an action to. God, I need to move one, two. I still couldn't get to him. God. Can you move me? <laughs> nope. All I can do is. I know it's crazy thinking of stride not being able to get there, but use your exhausts. Right. Actually, if I move twice, yeah, I can go. One, two, three, four. Before you do that. One, two, three, four. I can I can get here. Well, I can put this here. It doesn't matter. I can put it anywhere I want. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Just go for I'm still one away. Domain, man. He's, he's going to be activating all the enemies twice. How much does he so. have? 
He's got uh, nine left. So I'm going to attack. Well, let me go ahead and spin an action. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I can attack both of them with this card. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna spin this. So I'm doing. You mean to go ahead and do it first? Four. Well, I'm just attacking him real quick. Four on accurate. There's a burst. Oh yes. Might as well just be there anyway. So the way this works when you're hitting the, during a showdown, here's all my burst effects. Um, he is getting plus one defense for each. Mutate effect in play. Luckily, I don't have any yet, but we're doing the showdown effect. Which when you says, attack a villain, you draw a okay. showdown card after you roll your dice to see what the... Res there is none. Sometimes there's a response. So. so one, two, three, four, five, six, and I gain one back. So I did six damage to him. No defense. How much does General Domain have? He's got nine left. He's got... General Domain has nine? Yep. I'm going to spin that action again just attack him again, though, with only two dice this time. I have no other cards, really. Oh, I was going to say, if you weaken the general domain to get me a clue card, it might be uh -oh. useful. He immediately inflicts dealing plus one damage for each mutate effect in play. There is nobody he can hit because <laughs> of my... So he's inflicting for three? Me. So I hit him for two more. But he's inflicting you for three, right? Yeah, but I'm not there. That's my that's my decoy. He's not hitting me. Uh oh. If he moves on it, he would hit me. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do my building Wait. momentum exhaust effect. Huh. You should have done that first before I forgot. I, I'm going to so, save that. Because <laughs> then he would, he would activate. <laughs> I get three dice to attack. I'm going to attack General Domain. I don't think I'm going to get nine damage on this, but we'll see. Oh, I got a burst. It's starting. Eight, eight more. Eight more. It's starting. Eight more. Now, one, two, three, four. Um, I'll do four to him and I'll get a focus. And then I will play... He's over half dead. Flurried Strikes. Attack getting plus one die which is three, and then I can target any enemy within five spaces of me, and then I can move. So, here we go. No criticals at all, so I can do three damage total. Um, if you don't target him, you will look at the showdown effect. Would the, is it gonna kill General Domain? It won't kill him, but How much is left? He's got, uh, three would make him tap two left. Ugh. So then I would hit Wait, him. I got a free attack. I got a free attack. I'm going to go ahead and use this free attack. How much do you have left? He's got two left. Burst. Two bursts. Jeez. He's going to go down. All right. So two bursts. He's going to defeat him. I got a clue card. Give me a free attack. Nope. Oh, I forgot to read when General Domain was revealed. That's that's the that's the important part. Um, when yours was revealed... After researching Dan Labs from top to bottom, you can't find any clear way to shut down the Acrobats. All across the city, innocent people are being abducted and replaced by flesh-molded clones ready to cast their votes for General Domain. This can't happen. Just as you prepare to continue your investigation, you see an amorphous figure splatter to the ground near you, slowly forming itself back into a standing person to attack. And then mine was... Uh, what, what was that one? Oh, yeah. Um, do you think the city knows what's good for itself? General Domain asked, pacing behind his armed guards. These civilians don't know what war is, and that's what we're in right now, a war between order and chaos. You, he continued, pointing toward you, are chaos, and I'm a man of absolute order. You will stop me. You will not stop me from returning the city to, to glory. He's right. I am chaos. Curtains is pretty chaos. I have no cards, by the way. So I did two damage to him. Did you your, your um... place one minion in a scheme panel containing exactly one minion? If unable, place one minion in Dame Labs. So uh, Ackerd's gonna activate. So this guy is gonna move toward you. One, two, three. He can't. So he's gonna mutate. Uh, plus two to its health value. Gross. And then this guy is gonna act. He mutates. Um, and then I think that goes to the, the nearest bio fiend, right? Yeah. So plus one inflict value. So it's plus one health, plus one inflict value. And then plus two health? Yeah, plus two health. Um, and then he's going to acrid mutates and inflicts each hero near him. So there's none here near him. If no hero is near acrid or a bio fiend, acrid inflicts the hero nearest him instead, which is you. So three damage. That will defeat me. Is it? Exactly what's going to defeat me. So he's placing a... He got he got a clone through. 
And then you're st you're starting back up here. Okay. I know, up here on the board. I thought we were on. I was on the board. Well, next. you are at the end of your hero turn, which is now. So, and then uh, issue turn. A crisis, so he's just placing another issue token. So one more and we lose. That's really coming down to the wire. I did not expect this. I thought we were doing pretty Every well. time we play this, it does that. That's that's what's the beautiful thing about Here. it. Um, will Hour of Need, Buddy Cop, and Contra be shipped at the same time? Uh, no, right now, Hour of Need is literally ready to go. Um, I think Buddy Cop and Contra are getting uh, finished up in manufacturing. Um, I, don't think they're, I don't think they're actually in containers yet. Um, but they'll, they'll be shipped as soon as each of them is ready. Like... Um, they're not, nothing's waiting on anything else. Um, I have a red minion and acrid mutates. Oh no! Lucky, lucky, uh, lucky yes, there is really no, nothing I can say to defend the fiddliness of Ultra Quest. It is a, it's a dungeon call with lots of stuff going on. Lots of tokens, lots of cards, lots of things. To I want to redo it! Uh, we, we, we do have so, so many ideas of what we would have done differently with Ultra Quest. Um, we kind of let it kind of mutate as we were developing it and wanted to keep it within the MDS. Um, but I actually prefer to do something that was an MDS with Alter Quest and make it more of a simple dungeon crawl. Um, I like, we have all kinds of ideas for that, but yeah, it, it is definitely a big game and there's a lot going on with a lot of moving pieces. This one is much more focused. All right, let's see if we can kill him. I'm going to place a, yeah, it is definitely lots of bookkeeping. Uh, don't worry. Take no offense to that thought. <laughs> I'm going to place this, here. Um, Actually, no, also, it is also a table. Alter Quest takes up a huge amount of table space, which, again, this one is nicer because it's a lot easier to fit on a table. I'm going to do this. I'm going to spend an action to move here. Discard this. Then deal one damage to a nearby enemy or place one justice on a nearby problem. Um... I could take out. I could do straight damage to him, which would be nice. Aren't we just trying to go all out on him now? We are, but I, I want some clues. I want to rescue these. So what I want to do actually is spend a justice to rescue. I can I can let you this. move. By the way, if you were trying to Give move, me, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Give me that clue. If you can let me solve or something, it'd be nice. No, I'm not a superhero. And then. Uh... Oh, he's gone. Get out of here, General Levine. I was like, what's he doing there? Okay, go ahead. If you have something you want to do, if you can, if you can make me move, you can't make me solve. It's worthless. Um, I was just gonna get up to. I'll attack him. I was gonna get up to him. I'll attack him real quick. I can attack him three times this turn. I'm doing three or two times. Four dice on him. Here. Oh, I can also. Uh... Discard a justice from a problem to place a decoy token. Is there any justice out? There isn't. Dang it. Nope. Oh. It was a burst. So one, two, three. Before I resolve this, the showdown effect says, Accurate immediately mutates. Son of a gun! Oh my gosh. This guy is, this guy is nasty. We'll just stay away from the yellow. So one, two, three. So he's getting one, two, three defense right now. So he's blocking all three of these. But I can... Do two damage to him. Oh, yay. So he's at 10. He's half dead. One, two, three, four. One, two. So I can get to him. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's my action. My first action is to move twice. I'm going to go ahead and exhaust my hero card to get a free attack on him with a plus one die. Oh, I didn't do my uh, stuff, though. So I got uh, one, two. Go ahead and draw a. Draw a showdown card. Oh, showdown. Nothing. Okay, so I'm doing one, two, th four, four damage to him. Did you take into account his armor? I'm doing four hits. So he did one damage to him. <laughs> he has three defense? Yeah, every mutate effect. We need to kill that stupid thing if we want to get rid of the mutate effects. Well, I, I probably could have. He has two defense, six health. So he would take... No, 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 no. <laughs> Um, yeah, we do straight damage to him. Okay, well, if that was the case, I would have... Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw... I'm going to go ahead and use this to that for that attack. See if I can get any more damage on him. Uh, another hit. Two more hits. Two more on him? Yeah, two more. All right, is that it? That was... I have one more action left. 
I'm about to activate mine. He's gonna mutate. So he can no longer suffer damage while this enemy's in play. <laughs> and then, well, he's close by now, though, so. And then. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move. With my my last card to move there, and I'll just attack him with a measly two dice. I'm not gonna do anything to him. Bursts. One burst. Burst. Two bursts. Nothing. So if you spin, uh, you get damage if you spin a. I don't have any. Okay. So yeah, nothing. That's all I can do. Um, and then there's a minion gonna be spawning at uh, Dane Labs. It looks like. Oh, and he inflicts me for three damage. We let the mutates get out of hand. Uh, I should have gone for that biofiend instead of going straight for for him. Um. Okay, so he is. It'd be great if you could do a scheming alter quest expansion with streamlined gameplay, but still compatible with the previous heroes. You know, we've actually considered that, um, but I've, it's tricky because there are people that are very like they really love alter quest as it is, um, and so they'd probably be unhappy if we changed the game. And if we changed it too much and kept everybody happy, then we'd basically do it in two different games. Um, that's kind of more than we want to do. Um, so we, we've, we've definitely thought about what we want to do uh, with Alter Quest in the future, and it's still kind of an evolving concept. Um, uh, is maybe the era of Heroes of Terranop a new game based on Alter Quest or something like Heroes of Alter Quest Chronicles of Arc and Spire? Um, we've actually been working on a, um, a new game for a while that is basically like a, an evolution of Heroes of Terranoth that we want to we want to do um, someday soon. Uh, we haven't we don't need details to share about that yet, but we actually really want to do it in the um, the Lasting Tales setting, like the yeah. If any, yeah, I don't know if anybody follows um, like uh, my my personal social media, but um, I've actually been writing a novel in a. Well, before we get into that, did we just lose? Yeah, we just lost. We just okay. We just lost the game. Uh, the, he has he plays he the was, last clone. He had six six health left. So if I would have if I wasn't so crazy, you know, focused on him, I would have taken out that biofiend on my turn, and maybe we would have killed him this turn or next. But that was my fault. Stride uh, got a little cocky. So um, yeah, uh, that was you know not too bad. It was about what about an hour, um, and we were you know learning the game again, explaining it to you guys. So nice little quick game, very very fun. Uh, can't wait for this one to get out there. Um, to backers, uh, it really sucks that we have to deal with all this shipping nightmare situation. But anyway, back to what you were saying. Oh, yeah. I, I was just saying, um, as much as we had fun with AlterQuest's uh, setting and everything, um, it, it, it wasn't as um, kind of like intricately planned out because we've had a lot more time to spend on uh, the Lasting Tales setting, which is Aetha. Um, and it, like anybody who follows our s social media, like my, my personal one specifically, um, I've been chronicling my uh, drafting of my first man, my first novel in the Aetha setting. So we're very committed to that uh, that world. Um, it's actually, we're, playing, I, we're actually playing a D&D campaign right now yeah. that's set in that setting. So. Yeah, so it's there's a lot of reasons I, I like that setting, and I, I, I'm partial to it. And my, plus... And Lasting Tales is just going to be an incredible game. I'm really, really stoked for that. So, um, I that as far as fantasy goes, um, we we do want to do stuff like Alter Quest, but we want to build out the Aether world more than we do the Alter Quest world. That one was a little more, it was a more different fantasy, but we want to just do traditional fantasy. We just want to lean into that D and D's type fantasy. Um, but that is not to say that we're not doing anything with the Alter Quest world. I mean, we have ideas. Um, especially just different timelines within that world because it has um, it has its own unique stuff, its own unique history. Um, it's just when it comes to traditional fantasy, we don't want uh, two settings that are kind of at odds with each other. You know, kind of competing for the same um, the same audience. Yes, we failed, failed miserably. Um, I think I think we were we were rushing him too much. Yeah, um, the the problem with Ackard is you really have to make sure you don't let like one of his biofiends be out long enough that gets all those attachments because there's some nasty attachments. Once you get that one, that they won't let him take damage until it's gone. And if he's already buffed up like that, yeah, it's, 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 it's nasty. A, we, we didn't have a, we also didn't have a really big fighting character um, with us. It was really good at attacking. Um, like if we had majesty with us or something, we probably would have done, had a better chance of finishing him off. It was close um, though. Always comes down to the wire. There's a question about when will Brook City and the expansions be restocked? Um, that one, there is no planned reprint currently. 
because if we did a reprint, it would require a uh, Kickstarter to fund it. We don't have the the capital to to fund a reprint of that currently, especially with how it's sold. Uh, it just wasn't as uh, popular of a game um, as, as much as we wanted it to be. But, you know, we still have ideas for Brook City, so um, we just haven't announced anything yet. Um, Someone's asking if we can see more Lasting Tales gameplay. I think we probably would be streaming some of our playtests. Yeah, we can probably now, do a so. live stream um, of a playtest. When Mark's currently working on the next draft of the rules, which is like the final draft of the, the rules for playtesting, um, once that's ready to go, we'll probably we can probably do a live stream if people want to see that. Um, it's Bray and I played. We're playing through a campaign in the last draft, um, and it was it was really fun. Like we really enjoyed it. So, uh, anybody who likes role playing games in miniatures games would be will be very happy with Lasting Tales. Um, yes, those are those two questions about Lasting Tales. Um, if you could expand any of the worlds you created. Which one would you like? Would you most like to take on um, out of Street Masters, Brook City, Ultra Quest? Um, I think uh, the I think there's two things there. It's, there's like there's like games and then there's like the setting. Like uh, setting wise of all those, um, I mean, I, we like I said, I have we have ideas for Ultra Quests. I would say uh, the Lasting Tales one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that one's obvious. That one should be the the no brainer. I mean, I, like I said, I'm I'm working on a very a very big novel for that one and it, it means a lot to me so that's that's obviously going to be a front runner it's not really revisiting though because we're still we're still working on it yeah and he also he also clarified just like not just expansions but like other games in the same world yeah, same yeah. setting and i think lasting i think the eighth setting is a good candidate for that because that's yeah. we kind of want that to be like our kind of our default fantasy setting um that's we feel really strongly about like where the, the, the direction it's going and we have lots of cool ideas about it so um, Dr. Bandage asked if we'd consider merging those. Um, not necessarily. Like, like I, we'd be more prone to like if we ever did something. And I'm not saying we're doing this because we we just we have projects, you know, always backed up. But if we did something like Alter Quest, I w it'd be my my personal preference. This is just me speaking personally. I would just want to replace the setting and just do like an Aetha Alter Quest because that well that not would even, fit. You know, I mean, I think you're thinking more along the lines of just doing another dungeon crawl like yeah yeah another yeah, du yeah. A, a dungeon crawl set in a lasting tale yeah, setting yeah yeah um it wouldn't be mds it would just be it'd a, be the spirit of a whole new quest, game but yeah but but yeah i don't um i don't i i really i'm i'm a world builder so i really don't like the idea of just mashing stuff together um especially when those both those worlds were i mean you know, the geography's set you know and everything and there's the peoples are the, all the different races and everything in there um so i wouldn't want to combine them um, but, I, but I think that that is the issue is like, I don't, I don't want to have two um, I don't want to try to support two different fantasy worlds. I, and Aetha is obviously the preferential one. So, um, any date on the myth and goal Kickstarter? Um, we haven't announced one just yet. Um, unfortunately we're, uh, you know, we're excited. I'm very excited about it. We've been, you know, getting art and sculpts in and things like that. It's like, you know, I, I've been seeing what James has been doing with the game and it's, it's all very exciting. Um, however, we're trying to, uh, be, aware of the shipping delays that are causing a lot of a lot of new backers to our projects who haven't uh, really seen any of our products yet because they're new like for example we had a lot of backers on the fantasy series one kickstarter um like sixteen thousand some backers um and a lot of those people were new to blacklist games so this is their first experience with our projects and they haven't actually seen the final product yet um even though there's been videos of reviews and stuff out there some people just want to see it in their hands and we get that um and so we're hoping that we can get either all of it delivered or as much of it as fulfilled as possible before we launch Myth and Gold. Um, and again, we wanted to have Fan Series 1 delivered before Lasting Tales launched. Like, I mean, it was a, to us it was a no-brainer. It was done in December. It's like, of course it's going to be fulfilled before the summer. Like, no, that's no problem. Um, of course, the, the shipping crisis kind of just took us all by surprise. Um, and it's, it's the worst thing about it. We can't do anything about it. Like, there's literally nothing we can do um, aside from paying more money for shipping containers, which we did. Other than that, everything's out of our hands. It's just delay after delay. So, um, we're just we're hoping to get as much of that out there as possible, uh, so people can you know see it. And if they if they're interested in fantasy football, they can come check out Myth and Goal. Um, obviously, we can't delay it forever because we're reliant upon funding our projects to stay in business. Like if we don't fund a project, we don't have jobs. Simple as that. So, 
Somebody asked uh, what the, what makes it unique from other Blood Bowl like games. Um, you can probably speak a lot more to that because you played a lot more than me. I just I've played Blood Bowl like you know with you, and I've played Blitz Bowl. Um, what I like most about this game is it, it it feels more like it feels more like a board game, um, traditional board game. Um, so it's kind of like a complete experience. Not to say like you know Blitz Bowl is a complete experience, but I think it's kind of like it, it's that entry point almost. Um, but it. It feels more like, uh, you know, just a, a, a solid board game it's, with it's, unique theme. Yeah, and... It's more about, like, it's got a more, more of a strategy feel to it as opposed to the tactile nature of Blood Bowl. Where it's, Blood yeah, Bowl is kind of like a miniatures game, you know. Where you I think the guys. strategy aspect is what I was getting um, at. It feels more strategic. Yeah, you feel like a te- you're like managing a team. You have to you know, have to deal with your players getting tired. You call them timeouts to swap them out and stuff like that. Where it's like, oh, this player's fatigued. I want to bring him out and bring my other guy in. Um, so you're managing which players are active and which aren't. Um, it's also it's, it's like less like violent where it's like not like about killing players it's just injuring them and, and fatiguing them um, but it's also you know it's, it plays much faster than Blood Bowl um, and it's much more focused uh, it's not you know you don't have 11 players on the on the field you have a team of you have a team of eight players and five of them are on the field at one time um, so it plays quicker um, it's more I think it's more intuitive uh, it's a little simpler um, but it's still very lots of strategy um, I'm very excited to get it out there. I'm very, very excited. We're going to do some designer diaries to have, you know, James, we're writing them up right now, James and Sophie, and they're, um, they'll explain to you how it functions. You get a better idea of everything that's different about it than other fantasy football games. And also, one of the big things is there's going to be a solo play, and that's, I don't know of any fantasy football games out there that have solo play. So that's uh, a big difference, I think. Um, yeah, I think that that was... That was uh, all covered. Um, I know we were. I was hoping maybe some people from other project, other projects we did, might have hopped in to have questions about what's going on with them. Um, but yeah, other than, pretty much we're just dealing with delays, um, like every every publisher is right now. Um, so we we have um, we we post updates when we can. Um, when we get information from our fulfillment partner about where things are. Um, I wish we had more control over this over shipping and stuff like that we just we don't it's not what we do we we hire from a company to do it and um they do they do what they do best so uh we we know how to take bile you know with uh the grain of salt which sounds gross um but we i mean we get we understand frustrations um i mean it's it's not always easy to empathize because i i you know people handle handle frustrations different ways i personally don't go on kickstarter comments and look for blame or like try to. You I mean, know. I don't even. I, I people can go to my Kickstarter profile. I back a lot. I've backed a lot of Kickstarters in my day. I just don't even go to the comments myself. I just yeah. back projects and that I find interesting, and then I just wait for that. Yeah, and we, and we have to be reminded to you know to, to pop into comments because like you know it's not because I want to avoid talking to people and and, and engaging and, and having discussions about our games, but we I just don't spend much time personally because I'm a it's, fan also. You it's know, not it's not good for mental health. Yeah. Um, I I do check them frequently and it does I do get depressed and I get you know it gets to me and I try to let I try not to let it but it does because it's easy all, to get angry when somebody keeps trying to especially trying when to <laughs> twist yeah. your words especially <laughs> when the, the project was especially a personal project of mine like I was very excited about doing this line of miniatures and it's and it's it was a crazy good deal $65 for just so many miniatures we were so happy that how it turned out um, but yeah it's just constant negativity that I that I I see, and it, it, it does get to me. So, um, Jeremy asked again. The Ultra Quest came back up. I, I think, like, I think the best way to kind of talk about Ultra Quest is, um, Adam and I don't are, aren't excited about making more of what what's already there. Um, we there's a lot of content there um, from Ultra Quest, and I we don't have we there are a lot of things we want to do to improve the the flow of that game. So if we were to revisit Ultra Quest, it would be in a new way. It would be, it would be, it, it probably wouldn't be MDS. It'd probably still be, you know, have some car driven nature well, to I mean, it, but it just, uh, although this is all personal preference. Yeah, obviously yeah. We're, we're a published company. So if, if people love a game and they want more of it, obviously we're going to, we're going to, you have listen, to we're going to, we're going to listen. Yeah. We're going to, if people are just, you know, salivating for more Ultra Quest, obviously we can, we can, you know, look into doing more Ultra Quest. We haven't we haven't, haven't planned it just yet because Ultra Quest kind of just came out last, like, I mean, just the end of the last year, um, and there's quite a bit of stuff to play through. Um, so you know, we're definitely planning projects. Uh, we don't have anything to announce just yet. 
However, it, yeah, but it, if, it, if the demand is there, then yeah. we'll, we'll pay attention. It's, to it. It, we would we would very much like like I said before, we would very much like to have one fantasy setting we can support. Um, so it's not splitting focus, um, it's not splitting audiences. Um, I, you know, I I would love personally. It's I don't I don't want to sit there and pontificate and like say you know what we're gonna do and and make plans, but it would be something where. Uh, a new form of Alter Quest that's associated with Atho is what I would want to want to do something along those lines. Yeah, and you also compare projects where last you know Alter Quest did so well, Lasting Tales Kickstarter, while Lasting Tales Kickstarter was combined with the miniatures that some people just bought the miniatures. Sure, but there's still that that project made this much money, so it's like okay, if this project's doing this well and selling this many people, going over this well, we kind of have to you know. Go go where what people want, you know. Got to give people what they want, and also what we're excited about as well. We need to do what we're excited about. Otherwise, it'll show in our product. Where if we just put stuff out just to appease people, um, it's the project, the content will suffer. Um, so any there was changes? a question about any cha- um, yeah, changes yeah. to future manufacturing partners that aren't in China. Uh, if it was feasible, sure. Like it's the problem is it's just not financially financially feasible to produce games certain places. Yeah, there are people that are exploring that, um, but it would definitely affect cost of the game. Yeah. Um, so there's that, a lot of, like, that cost all goes to the consumer. So it's not, I mean, it's not something that, that businesses are trying to cut their own costs and save their own margins. They, they just don't want to drop their own prices of their product because people have to put, have to pay the difference. And, well, in addition, we also have a good relationship with our yeah. with our the factory in China. Like they they do a lot of our projects, and they're we're starting to develop a working relationship where they know what we want, and they kind of you know everything. Our projects are starting to go more smoothly, um, and that, that's very important as well, just having a good working relationship with your manufacturing partner, yeah, um, especially when they do very good quality material. Yeah, and it's it's going to be, it's going to take a lot for anybody to really compete with the decades and decades of experience that the, the, the Chinese manufacturing has on this on this type of stuff. So it's, I mean, it's, it's a, it, there's a reason that, that, that you don't see the shift happening because yeah. it just, it's I mean, just you, you couldn't reliable. guarantee anybody would love to just have their their games manufactured as close as possible to where they yeah. need to be, uh, because you know shipping from China takes a long time, but also is is prone to these massive delays when bad things happen. Um, um, so, yeah, the delays don't bother you as much as communication. Yeah, uh, we always try to f- uh, update our backers with information we have as there's new information. We we don't post updates every week when there's nothing to say um not only do we not want to remind people that things aren't there yet but people also just don't like getting spammed in their inbox of you know nothing nothing to report so we like to you know have news to report when we do updates yeah and and dr bandage that's i I think regardless um we would never abandon um ultra quest fans um regardless of what we ever do with that project or or what that product line whatever happens um if it takes on a new life somehow we would want to do it in a way where it's, it would support, you know, what what's out there, um, and let let people in, implement their their content in, in, in a new way, tell new stories and stuff. Yeah, I mean, we we like I said, we're not we haven't announced any plans yet for the next uh, Ultra Quest pro- projects. Um, but you know, like even if we did something where we wanted to change the gameplay, and this is Ultra Quest Second Edition, we would make it so we would design content for all the existing heroes and monsters that people already have. It would use the same dice, and and know. it would be cheaper because we would do we wouldn't do it where we wouldn't do like every character's a deck. It'd be more like there'd be class cards maybe, but then there's like just hero sheets that we would just send a pack of hero sheets here. Take your all your heroes, and here's like the sheets for all your monsters. And um, it's, it's, it's good. It's good to know, Doctor, that you'd be open to uh, extreme line experience, though, as you know, and you also like Alter Quest. So it's good to know that people what people want, you know, with Alter Quest. So if people. All we hear is the occasional, is there more Alter Quest stuff coming? But, you know, if there's specific things people want to see, if they're open to new ways to play the game, that's all stuff that we'd like to hear. You know, we we, we definitely listen to feedback, um, and it's great to know that you'd be open to that because, um, you know, we also love the work you've done with the uh, the uh, the document that you've, we worked with you on, um, that walkthrough. That's what, we're, that's what we're looking for, the walkthrough. Uh, I know people found that extremely helpful, so thank you for all the hard work you do. Yeah. Um, invest an hour of need. I'm sure we will want more in the future. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah, we we would lo- we would love if Alter Quest, if uh, sorry, if Hour of Need would have done better. I had so many cool ideas for it. Um, but you know, 
hopefully when it gets out there, people spread the word and, you know, the demand is there because we could easily do more content for it and, like, a reprint in the future. Um, yeah, it just it just always depends on how well the project does. Um, we the Do you always design together or are there projects you'd like to design individually? I mean, we have designed individually. It just I, I mean, personally have no desire to design stuff myself. I I usually uh, we just don't publish individually. I should yeah. say <laughs> we design we design plenty individually. Like I have I have a bunch of game. Like before we started doing like this seriously, I had a bunch of projects I was working on back when you moved back to Indiana and I was still in Minnesota and I had a lot of free time on my hands. I would just kick around some design ideas and I had a couple of prototypes built. But it's just you know it, that's that's as far as I would take it really. I mean it wasn't until we got together and started making things, you know, reality that I got serious about it. If I designed stuff myself, it would take forever. Um, people who know Bray, Bray and I have been talked about this before where our working relationship, I usually rely on Brady's constant flow of random ideas uh, to grab and, you know, choose the ones that work <laughs> the best. Um, so I, it, it would take forever for me to design stuff by myself. But I know because when I worked at FFG, my first project was Descent Second Edition, um, and that was a long project because uh, I was working with a team of people, but I was kind of in charge of it. So, yeah, I really uh, we were looking at someone just mentioned about being uh, psyched about our meet and Dire Alliance. We were just reviewing Dire Alliance cards, and it's it's a it's an awesome little game. It's it's such a cool product. So uh, yeah, I think, I th- I think flew some under the radar a bit too. But <laughs> I think some people might have been turned off by the horror theme, the way that the kind yeah, of horror we did. It wasn't but, it wasn't like it wasn't traditional in a lot of ways. And, I feel like when that game gets out there, people are going to realize just how, how cool that game is. Um, Dave and Trevor did a great job with it, um, and if it does well, we'd love to do it in other other genres. Um, yeah, so I think we caught up on everything. Um, if uh, you have any, if you have desire that you want to see more Our View playthroughs, let us know. We're more than happy to do that. We're also more than happy to do a Lasting Tales playtest live stream, so you guys can kind of see um, how the game is uh, developing and before it's final. Um, we'll, we'll be happy to play through um, a, a quest for you guys. Um, yeah, yeah, we mentioned yeah, we, Myth and Goal a little bit. Yeah, yeah we did mention Myth and Goal. <laughs> we're, we're we're very excited to get really in in depth with it. Um, we are, we have kind of been tiptoeing around it because we kind of want to make sure we were we just really want fantasy series one to be delivered. Um, we want to get that that out there at the minimum. Um, our need is also in the process of you know getting getting locked on the boats, but obviously fantasy series one has been fully delivered in certain regions like uh, Australia, New Zealand, and Europe and China. Um, however, the big big chunk of our pledges and from U.S., Canada, rest of the world, and also from the U.K. Has, has experienced a massive delay, and that sucks. It's a, such a huge bummer, um, and it's really affecting, you know, a lot of, th- all kinds of things. It's, it's having a knockoff effect of all, all of our projects and just delaying everything. So we're trying to deal with that, and, you know, we'll have, we have lots of stuff to talk about with Myth and Gold very soon, so. Um, cool. All right. Well, um, yeah. Let us know what you guys want to see next time we join. We have a live stream. Uh, maybe we'll have another one in a couple weeks, or um, maybe next month. Uh, but if you know, if you want to see more out of need, let us know. Um, but we can also plan on doing some lasting tales. So definitely want lasting tales. I see a couple votes for that, so I'll mark that down. Lasting tales. So thanks again for joining us. Um, thank you for your support and understanding for situation we're in and everything. And we cannot wait to get our need to you.